everyone today we are going to discuss about photo correlation photo correlation is another important assumption of regression analysis that we want to satisfy for a better regression model thus in our agenda we first talk about what is photo correlation then we outline some causes of photo correlation in our third agenda we will see what are the consequences of photo correlation next how we can detect photo correlation is described in the fourth agenda and lastly we finish with one demo example on how to detect photo correlation in spss what is photo correlation photo correlation occurs when the residuals that is difference between observed and predicted values of the regression model are dependent on each other if photo correlation exists then it creates problem to the regression model and adjustments may be necessary to address this issue causes of photo correlation first one is photo correlation can be caused by the presence of time trends in the data second one is seasonal patterns in the data can lead to photo correlation for example sales data because in sales data uh, uh, sales data are higher during festive season and they may exhibit some amount of photo correlation third one is photo correlation can occur when the effect of a variable is not immediate but lags behind fourth one is if regression model is not correctly specified then it may cause photo correlation and the fifth one is measurement errors in the data can also lead to photo correlation consequences of photo correlation photo correlation uh, keeps us a biased parameter estimates second one is incorrect significance tests inaccurate forecast and loss of statistical control are another two consequences of photo correlation and the fifth one is misleading model interpretation is the biggest concern of photo correlation how to detect photo correlation photo correlation can be detected using darwin watson test the darwin watson test is named after two developers james darwin and jeffrey watson the darwin watson test statistic is denoted by small d and it ranges from 0 to 4 hypothesis to be tested in photo correlation the null hypothesis is that there is no first order photo correlation in the residual and the alternative hypothesis is that there is first order photo correlation in the residual interpretation of darwin watson test result if d is close to 2 we conclude that there is no significant first order photo correlation if d is significantly less than 2 approaching 0 then there is positive photo correlation and if d is significantly greater than 2 approaching 4 then it indicates negative photo correlation next we take an one demo data set for explaining the steps required for performing photo correlation test in spss here the dependent variable is taken as total expense of the person 
and the total expense of the person is predicted using the independent variables like total income of the person, age of the person, work experience of the person, number of children of that person, educational attainment of the person, if graduated, it's one and if not, zero. Now, we open our SPSS window for performing autocorrelation test that is Darwin version test in SPSS. As we already entered our data in SPSS, so we directly go to the steps required for performing Darwin version test. We first click on analyze and then select regression. From, from regression, we select linear. Now, two boxes is going to open. The first box is dependent variables box and the second box is independent variables box. Here, total expense is our dependent variable. So, we move expense to the dependent variable box and all other variable that is income, age, education, etc. are moved to the independent variables box. Next, we click on statistics and then we check Darwin version box under residuals head and click continue and finally click OK to get our results. Here, in model summary table, we are getting our Darwin version D statistic value. For this example, the Darwin version D statistic is 0 0.726, which is not, uh, 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 not equal to 2 and is towards 0. So, we can conclude that our uh, data is having autocorrelation. Now, we need to encounter this problem of autocorrelation. There are several ways we can remove autocorrelation from our data. One of them is changing order of the data. Thus, we again go back to our SPSS window and arrange the data expense in ascending order. For arranging the data in ascending order, we click on the expense variable and then click on sort ascending order. After sorting the data in ascending order with respect to expense, we follow the same steps. That is, we go to analyze. From the analyze, we select regression. In regression, we select linear and not altering anything, we click OK to get the modified value of Darwin version D statistics. Now, we are getting Darwin version D statistics as 1.631, which is also not close to 2. Thus, we again conclude that our model is having autocorrelation. We now again go to our data and now we sort income according to, uh, we sort income in ascending order. For this, we again follow the same steps. Now, the, the data with respect to income is sorted in ascending order. Now we again click analyze. From analyze we click regression. In regression we click linear. And now again without altering anything here we click OK to get the Darwin version D statistic value. Now our Darwin version D statistic value is coming as 2.058 which is close to 2. Now we can conclude that our data set is 
free from autocorrelation and we can use this data to predict total expenses of any person having independent variables as age, work, work experience, etc. Thank you for listening to me. Also, like and share my video and subscribe to our channel.